Welcome aboard. In the last video, one of you had asked how the car handles roundabouts in full self-driving. And I realized I didn't know the answer to that. So today we're going to be taking the car through several roundabouts here in Irvine, California, through an area of the city known as the Great Park. There are quite a few roundabouts here, and we're going to be coming up on the first one just now. Okay, that's somewhat what I expected, uh, a full stop through um, the entrance to the roundabout, but the car seems to have handled it with no problem. Granted, that was a, an empty roundabout, no other vehicles were there at the time. So we're going to be coming up on a second roundabout that's usually a little busier, and we'll see how this does. It looks like a full stop again before entering the roundabout. The car proceeds in the correct lane. Yeah, that worked out great. Um, not much to say there. It executed the entry and exit of the roundabout uh, without much of a problem. Probably better than some human, human drivers that I've seen. There's going to be a third roundabout coming up here um, in a few seconds. All right, here we go. Looks like it's coming up to a full stop again on this third roundabout. Yeah, not much to say there. Handled it great. Okay, so I disengaged full self-driving and now I'm re-engaging it again and doing much of the same route in the reverse order. And we'll see how the car likes it in this direction. Okay, this is the fourth roundabout on this trip. Yeah, not much hesitation there. Uh, didn't come to a full stop. Uh, checked if it was clear, but then proceeded to go much quicker than the first three. All right, car is slowing down here. That is not phantom braking. Looks like this person on the boosted board was headed straight for the same intersection that we were about to cross. The car applied the brakes, let the boosted border head through the intersection safely. Um, car caught that boosted border faster than I did. I actually thought the car was phantom braking for a second. Okay, this is the fifth roundabout, I believe. Car hesitates, yields for a little bit, but doesn't come to a complete stop like in the previous roundabouts and proceeds to continue through.
sixth roundabout with some cars already in it. Car yields appropriately. And handles it without much fuss like the previous roundabouts. So you're probably drawing the same conclusions that I am. This isn't much of a stress test for full self-driving. Sure, the car could probably enter the roundabouts a bit quicker, uh, not come to a complete stop in certain situations, but for the most part, the car is handling the roundabouts just fine. And I will say that these roundabouts are newer than most. These are probably constructed in the last five years. As you can see, the lane markings are nice and clear. The signs are nice and clear. There isn't much traffic right now. I'm not driving at rush hour. So the conditions are favorable for the car. Nonetheless, this is pretty impressive. First time that I've seen the car do full self-driving through the roundabouts. This is the final roundabout for this video. Looks like there are several vehicles waiting to enter. Uh, the car is gonna yield to all three of those vehicles and handle the seventh roundabout without a problem. I hope this video adds to your understanding of full self-driving beta 10.9's capabilities and limitations and helps you draw your own conclusions about the future of this technology. I'm really excited about where this is going to go. I've seen this car improve in the, the month or so that I've had the technology. And that's only a month or so. I can't imagine where this is going to be in 12 months. And to think that, you know, over a million Teslas have the hardware to do this. It's just mind blowing. Um, if you like this video, please sub consider subscribing, consider liking the video, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks.